and uh, wait till that recording starts and I'll get started. Now, up until now, we've covered basically the prelims for algebra. We've covered evaluate and determine, which means plug and chug. So we've covered evaluate and determine, which means plug and chug. And I told you that there'd be a couple of questions about plug and chug and about evaluate and determine. Then we talked a little bit about combining like terms, which we're going to get into that um, here shortly. Combining like terms. And we also talked about what a term is. A term is made up of a coefficient, which is a fancy word for a number, and a variable, which is usually a letter. And we talked about, you know, numerical sentence and equation versus an expression. An expression doesn't have an equal sign. Uh, equation does. Equation you solve. And what do you do to an expression? You don't solve it, you what? Right. I'm sorry, what? Miss Grindle's here. You simplify it. Hey. Miss Grindle, she's had a hangover and she she's in here late today. I gotta redo the I gotta redo the attendance now. Thank you, Miss Grindle. All right. So I should, I should have announced myself. I know. Sorry. You should have announced that you were gonna be late. All right. <laughs> All right, there you go. There is what we've covered so far in 6.1. And like I said, they used to put 6.1, and that would be it. And then they'd move into 6.2. But now they have, in this new book, they have integrated 6.2 into 6.1, and this is solving equations. Now I'm going to look in 6.2. They may be continuing that in 6.2, but I'm not sure. Now, with solving equations, most of you can do the four basic equations. You've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, I'm going to put an asterisk, and division. Most of you can do these. These are one-step equations. You've got to start off crawling before we can walk. One-step equations, and here they are. X plus four is equal to seven. X minus three is equal to 12. Two X is equal to 14. And X divided by three is equal to 20. These are all one step equations. And all of you found out back in pre-algebra and algebra one and algebra two that the objective of algebra and this is in pink so this is important is to get the variable what what do we get the variable get it what by itself by what itself by itself isolate the variable that's your main objective of algebra to get the variable by itself I'm not talking about graphing. I'm talking about just solving equations. When you're solving equations, that's your main objective. So I need to get rid of this positive four. Now there's two ways to do it. You can say I'm going to subtract four on both sides, or you can say this is a river, and I'm going to take this across the river. Dang old river sticks, dang old Nile River, dang old alive, dead, okay? I don't care how you learned it. I don't care how you do it. And you'll get the same answer. You can say, okay, I'm adding four, so I need to subtract four. Whatever I do on one side, I do on the other. That's one way of learning it. 
The other way is the equal sign represents a river. And when you cross that river, a live person becomes dead. You know, the Nile River, and that's what they used to think. Oh, shut up. So X. I thought it was the River Styx. That is the River Styx, but, but in different mythologies and different belief systems, I think the River Styx. It was a uh, river. That was, that, I believe that was Asian, wasn't it? No, no, no. That was Egyptian. Uh, the River Styx was Egyptian. No, no, no. Um, that was Greek. It was Greek mythology, and it was uh, Greek, the River that's Styx, it. I believe. And then the Egyptians was the Nile. So X is equal to three. Now, most of you should be saying to yourself, oh, I remember how to do this. I did this back in pre-algebra. That's good. And here, we're going to have the river right here and take it across the river. That dead person becomes alive. And that's going to be X is equal to 15. So could you not just kind of like do what I did and just kind of count? <laughs> yes, but if you put three or four steps in it, you're not going to be able to do that. Because, okay. like, yeah, all you, I did can, was like, you can say seven one, minus four is equal to three. You can do that in your head all day long. But when I add four or five different steps to it, fractions, decimals, distributive law, combining like terms, you can't do that in your head. So it's either me teach you three or four different ways to do it or teach you one way to do it. So I'm going to go with one way. And then hopefully you can grab on to the way I'm showing you. But yes, these one step equations, you can pretty much do it in your head. Divide by two, divide by two. If I do it on one side, I got to do it on the other. X is equal to seven. Multiply by three, multiply by three. X is equal to 60. And like I said, all of these are one step equations and most of you can do these like mentally as well as physically. That's not where the problem is. I put these on the test, everybody in here make 100. All right, that's not where the problem is. Where is the problem? Well, I take a one step equation and I add, let's, let's put one step equation right here. One step equation. And I add to that one step equation. I add combining like terms. Or I add distributive law. Or I add fractions. Or I add decimals or I add all four then you got students that go math is just not my thing all right these are called multi-step equations now I'm going to show you we're going to do each one, and then we're going to do a com combination of them. And I think that's probably what they're doing in 6.2. They're introducing these in 6.1, but I'm not sure until I actually look. Okay, so here's what we're going to be working on, because this is what people suck at. People don't suck at these. People suck at these. So let's take the first thing, combining like terms. So here is an equation that would have combining like terms in it. Now I'm going to be real simple. I'm going to start out real simple because this is one area in algebra that I do have to build on. So we're going to crawl before we can walk. Here we go with 2x plus 4x is equal to 3 
minus one. Now this is pretty simple because all of your X's are on one side and all of your numbers are on one side and everything's hunky dory because everything's on the left side and everything's on the right side. So this is a, you know, Mickey Mouse combining like terms problem. So 2X plus 4X is 6X. And 3 minus 1 is 2. And you divide by 6. And X is equal to 1 third. Now I guarantee you, you're not going to be able to do this in your head and get one third by saying blah, 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 blah. So X is equal to one third. Very difficult to do. So that right there is a problem that you're, you know, if you don't do it step by step, you might get messed up. Any questions on that one? That one's pretty straightforward. Now, here's one. 2X. plus three is equal to four X minus one. Here I've changed things up a little bit. May not come out with the same answer, okay? Because things are different on each side. But what am I going to do? Well, there's, Hubert's got a rule that he goes by. This is a Hubertism. And I tell students that you can take it or leave it. All right. I'm going to show you this Hubertism, and some of y'all are going to use it, and some of y'all are not going to use it. And the ones that are not going to use it, they're going to whine when we get the inequalities, and they're getting the wrong answers. And the ones that did follow me, they get the right answers. So I'm just telling you, I give everybody this Hubertism when I start this. Always keep, always try to keep the variable positive by moving the little bucket. If I asked y'all to come out on the farm, and I told you that I wanted you to feed the cows or feed the horses or feed the chickens or whatever. And you had your choice between a two and a half gallon bucket and a 10 gallon bucket. To feed with. Which one are most of y'all going to pick? 10. I Wait, did you say to feed corner. with or like to get with? Y'all are trying. To, some of y'all can break the anvil with a banana. All right, I'm going to say this one more time. You are to feed the animals. Feed. F-E-E-D. Feed the animals. The feed is in the barn. And the livestock is outside of the barn. Their, their troughs or their places where you feed them are outside the barn. Are you going to use a 10 gallon bucket or a two and a half gallon bucket? 10 gallon. I, I would go with Have the 10 Have any of you two. ever used a 10 gallon bucket before? Oh, yeah. It's super heavy. We live and on it's pontoons. very <laughs> It's like carrying around a little barrel. It is. Okay. We put it, we just put the feet on the four by four and do it that way, but. <laughs> Okay, it gets more done if you carry the thing out. Okay, I'm not I'm not even going there, okay? <laughs> I'm, 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 there's no, this is 1825, okay? 1825, and y'all don't have any luxuries, okay? You know, the husband beats the woman, and the parents beat the children, and, and you have to do what they, you're told, okay? So, I'm going to ask you again, and I want you to think <laughs> common sense-wise. Are you going to pick the 10-gallon bucket or the 2.5-gallon bucket? Two and a half. half. I'm going to pick the smallest bucket. Most people that have worked on a farm knows that a 10 gallon bucket is like a little barrel. It's about as, you know, as awkward as a 30 gallon barrel. Okay. 
you so know, why don't I have a wagon very, to carry the 10 gallon? Very, why very carry... hard to work with a 10 gallon bucket. Dang. Okay. So most people are going to pick the smallest bucket. And most people are pretty lazy and they would pick the smallest bucket anyway. Now, if you have a curl, you would go with what? That. If you have a car, you just go with the tip. Yeah, if a frog had wings, he wouldn't, what? Jump. You know, if's a big word. All right, so most people are going to pick the smallest bucket. Where is the smallest bucket between 2X and 4X? Two. Two, so I'm going to take the two across the river. Now, this is when students go, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, and they start convulsing because they've been brought up that they have to put the X's on the left-hand side. Well, I'm going to leave this right here, and I'm going to show you something. Let's say that Miss Grendel, where do you live, Miss Grendel? Do you live in Anderson? I live in Easley. Okay, she lives in Easley, and they have a park in Easley, and in Easley, she takes her kids to the park, and there is a seesaw. Now, of course, there's always somebody in the group that goes, Seesaw? What's a seesaw? I've never heard of it. We seesaw. also have goats in the park. Oh, it's called a teeter-totter, okay? So if you want to call it a teeter-totter, you can call it a teeter-totter. But most people around here call it a seesaw. And she's looking at the seesaw from this direction. Miss, uh, Miss Grendel is looking at the seesaw. And her son, Jody, is sitting right here. And Susie is sitting right here. And they play blah, blah, blah all day long on the seesaw. And Jody's on the left side and Susie's on the right side. Everybody with me? Hey. Then Miss Grendel gets in the car and she goes to Anderson. And she meets a friend at the park. And there's another seesaw right here. And she's sitting right here. And Jody says, well, I'm going to sit on this side. And Susie's going to sit on this side. And Miss Grendel says, no, you can't do that. Jody has to sit on this side, and Susie's got to sit on this side. Somebody tell me what sense that makes. Doesn't. Someone weighs more than the other. Doesn't like make any sense at all, does it? So they well, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. So, with that being said, does it make a difference? whether your X is on the right-hand side or the left-hand side? No. Doesn't make any difference whatsoever. But well, why am I taking that the way. two over here? Because I want to keep the variable positive. Okay. okay. Now, again, if you want to do this, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't. But don't whine when we get inequalities and you get the wrong answer. Okay? So I'm going to keep going. <coughs> 4x minus 2x is 2x minus 1 is equal to 3. Now, a lot of people say, well, Hubert, why did you do the x's first? Because what is my main objective of algebra? To, to get the, get x the by variable itself. what? x by itself. By itself. The variable is what you're worried about. You could care less about the 3 and the 1, the negative 1. All you care about is this x. You want to get that variable on one side by itself. And I'm going to add one, take the one across the river, and it becomes a positive one. Four is equal to two X, divide by two. X is equal to two. Now there's going to be somebody in the group that says, well, Hubert, I got X is equal to two no matter what. That's fine. Just remember when you get the inequalities, and you're keeping your variable negative, don't whine when you miss one on the test. You can do it either way. But I have found that the best way to deal with variables is to keep them positive. Always try to keep the variable positive. 98% of the time, you can keep the variable positive by moving the smallest bucket. You got a 4x and a 2x. The 2x is the smallest bucket. You move it over here. So what if you start with a negative? Okay. 
I'm going to do that right now. You just got to remember which one's smaller. Is it better to have negative $200 in the bank or negative $400? Negative 2x plus 3 is equal to negative 4x minus 7. All right, I'm going to take my magic marker. <coughs> no more coughing in class. There's a bucket and there's a bucket. Which one's the smallest bucket? Now remember, which one's better to have in the bank? Negative $200 or negative $400? Negative 200. So negative 200 is bigger. So which one's smaller? Negative four. And bring it across the river. And you just turn your variable positive. You'd be surprised at how many people have gone through 12 years of school and was never told that they could make the variable positive. It makes life a whole lot easier. They're too busy putting Jody on one side of the. 2x is equal to negative 10. And x is equal to negative 5. Do a nerd. I'll leave that up for a couple more seconds. And let's do a nerd. I'm making somebody mad out there. I know I am. You're supposed to put the X on the left hand side. Well, you make sure when you take your kids to the park that Jody sits on the left-hand side of the seesaw all the time. So you have to follow Jody whenever he goes to another seesaw, you got to make sure he sits on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do a nerd. Negative 2x plus 7 is equal to negative x plus 4. All right, I want y'all to do that one. Here's a bucket. And here's a bucket. You just got to, which one's the smallest bucket? Which one would you rather have in the bank? That's larger. So ask yourself, which one's the smallest bucket? And move it and then do the problem. Give you a minute because it's a basic problem. Give you a minute. So which one's the smallest bucket? The X. Which one would you rather have <laughs> in the bank? Negative $200 or negative $100? You're going to use the, the X is the smallest one. Which one? Yeah. The negative 2X is the smallest bucket. What would you rather have in the bank? Negative $100 or negative $200? Negative 100. So that's the bigger one. So this is the smaller one. So what is negative 1x plus 2x? Positive 1. That's x. I'm going to put a 1 there just so you'll see that it's is positive 1 plus 4. And then take four across the river. And three is equal to one X. And of course, X is equal to three. And again, I kept the variable positive. You can put X on the left side or the right side, just like Jody and Susie can sit on either side, no matter if you're in Easley or if you're in Anderson. It is so one dimensional to teach students. You have to put X on the left hand side. 
And I guarantee you some of y'all were taught that way because I was taught that way. And it's not the correct way to teach students. Let's do a nerd. This time I'm going to do a little bit more just to discourage you. Negative 3x plus 7 minus 2 is equal to 4x minus 1x minus 7. Now you need to do a little bit of cleanup before you start. I got a question for you. Yeah. Okay, so is negative 2 smaller than negative 1 because one the negative 1 is closer to being positive and the negative yes. 2 is... Okay. Just, yes. ma just making sure I was following you. Yes, that that's like, true. That's why I keep asking you what's better to have in the bank because money is important to everybody. If I ask you which one is easier, better to be in the bank, negative $100 or negative $200? You'll pick 100, that's your larger, that's the largest, that's the biggest. That means this is the smallest. So anytime you're confronting two negatives, that's the first thing you ask. What's better to have in the bank, negative $100 or negative $200? And that will tell you which one is larger. The one that you want is the larger number. You don't have to do that, with uh, positives because you know which one's greater. So you are correct, Mr. Back. You always go with the one that's further away from zero when it's negatives. So here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine like terms here and here before I start this problem. So I get negative 3x. You have $7. You owe $2. So you have $5. Equals 4 minus 1 is 3x minus 7. So which one's the smallest bucket, negative 3x or positive 3x? This is your smallest bucket, so you take that across the river and it becomes positive 3x. So 5 is equal to 6x minus 7. 7 goes across the river and it becomes a positive 7. And I have no idea, what is that, 12 is equal to 6x. Divide by 6, and x is equal to 2. How do you check to see if you got the correct answer? You plug in the t with the x's on. Exactly. Yes, it's called back substitution. Back. Substitution. You back substitute the 2 in for x and you do the math and see if it comes out to be equal. If you've done this correctly, the correct answer will give you a true statement. So let's check it. I'm just going to check it over here. Negative 3 times parentheses plus 7 minus 2 is equal to 4 times parentheses minus 1 times parentheses minus 7. And I'm going to plug in a 2 here, a 2 here, and a 2 here. What's three times, negative three times two? Negative six, Hubert. Plus seven minus two is equal to, what's four times two? Eight. Eight minus two 
minus 7. What's negative 6 plus 7? 1. What kind of 1? Positive 1? Positive. And, positive 1. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. What's 8 minus 2? 6. And 6 minus 7 is, and that is a true statement. Negative 1 is equal to negative 1. So your, your answer of x is equal to 2 is correct. Now, this is combining like terms. We just combine like terms on 1, 2, 3, and four. There is four problems that we combine like terms. And that's it. Combine like terms, boom, that's it. Now that's just one thing. Now let's add the distributive law. The distributive law is when you have parentheses. Two times x plus three is equal to four times x minus one. Now, when you have these guys, these parentheses, this is like a concrete block. And anybody ever fool with concrete before? How's the only way you can bust a concrete block? With a big what? Big hammer. This is the hammer. This is the concrete block. Breaking it means that you have to take that hammer and bust up that concrete block. You have to take this hammer and bust up that concrete block. And that is called the distributive law. Distributive law uses multiplication. So two times X is two X. Two times three is six. Now if that was a negative three, it would be two times negative three, which is negative six. Here's a negative right here. So four times X is four X. And four times negative one is. And now you have what comes after distributive law? Combining what? Combining like terms. Usually the combining like terms comes after the distributive law. So I've got to find my smallest bucket. Which one's my smallest bucket? 2x. 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 Good job. And that gives me 6 is equal to 2x minus 4. Take 4 across the river. 10 is equal to 2x. Divide by 2. x is equal to 5. Take that five and let's plug it in. Two times parentheses plus three equals four times parentheses minus one. And I plug in that five. What's five plus three? Two times eight is equal to four times. What's five minus one? Four. And 16 is equal to 16. And that's a true statement. Therefore, it's five is correct. Remember, distributive law usually gives you combining like terms. It's never the other way around. Most of the time, you're going to use the distributive law first. You say most yeah. of the time, like there's 
times when this is not the case. Yes. In other words, there'll be some times when uh, you use the distributive law and there's no combining like terms. They're all different. Um, I would say probably 95% of the time you're going to use combining like terms after distributive law, but sometimes you may have a, a you may get a problem where there's not combining like terms and then you just stop because there's really nothing else you can do. So let's do a nerd. This time I'm going to throw a monkey wrench in it. Negative six times X minus one plus four is equal to negative two times X plus four minus three. Now, what do you do first? Well, the first thing you got to do is use distributive law because there's nothing else you can do. Okay, those parentheses got to be busted up. All right, finish it. I've got a visitor behind me. One of my friends. He's in a playful mood. That's Domino. He's gonna bite me. I'm a cat lover, I'm sorry. I like cats because they you never know they're in the house. Unless they want attention and if they do want attention, they jump up in your lap. You give them attention for five or ten minutes and they say, OK, I'm done and they get out of your lap. And nobody says anything. Y'all suck. Negative six X plus six plus four is equal to negative two X minus eight minus three. Who's got questions? How did I get a positive six? Somebody tell me how I got a positive six. Because negative six times negative one would be a positive six because those two negative numbers. So ding, ding. Exactly. Good job. And why did I get a negative eight? Because a negative two times negative four, so that's two negative times four. Negative two would be times negative positive eight. four is what? Negative eight, unlike signs. So that's come that comes out of five point two like signs and unlike signs. So I don't want you to I'll tell y'all a little secret. When I was coming up through Tri County. I turned over a desk in Pickens Hall. I think it was Pickens. Yeah, Pickens Hall because of this concept right here. I got kicked out of class because I got mad and I couldn't figure out why that six turned positive and that eight turns negative. I'm not proud of it, but some of y'all might think that math came easy to me. It didn't. And I can take you to the spot in Pickens Hall where I turned that desk over and got kicked out of class. So I can understand when some of you have frustrations. But I don't understand why y'all don't communicate that I don't understand. Negative 6x plus 10 is equal to negative 2x minus 11. Now we're back to yeah. what? I said yay. 
Wait, yeah, hold on. Right? No, that should be a negative five, right? Not negative you eleven. You owe eight dollars. You owe three dollars. What happens if you owe Miss Grendel eight dollars and you owe Miss Evil Sizer three dollars? What's the outcome of that, Mr. Pack? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> You've got to remember money. You've got to. All right, which one's the smallest bucket? Negative 6x or negative 2x? Which one's the smallest bucket? Two, I mean, uh, six. Negative six is the smallest bucket, so I'm gonna move it. 10 is equal to 4x minus 11. Take the 11 across the river. 4x is equal to 21. Divide by four. X is equal to 21 fourths. And I love it when students say, you have to turn that into a mixed number. No, I don't. Only time you use a mixed number is when. Mixed numbers us. are only used. Anybody know? Unit of what? With units of measure. Of measure. Mixed numbers, I meant, yeah, mixed numbers like two and three quarter cups or two and three quarter miles. Leave it like that. Unless you got a word problem to ask for miles or feet or quarts or gallons or. Mixed numbers are only used with units of measure. You don't have to turn that into mixed number just because some stupid math teacher told you to do that and didn't know what they were doing. Now, what if the directions tell you to turn it into a mixed number? Then you did turn it into a mixed number. But unless the unless the directions tell you that, if it's just a, an algebra problem and no units of measure, you just leave it as 21 fourths. And that is distributive law, then what? Combining like terms. Combining like terms. Usually combining like terms will follow the distributive law. And I've got maybe two minutes, so I'm going to cut it off right there. Now, let me look right quick. I'm going to look right quick. Oh. They did, uh, I'll show y'all, I got to show somebody because they just put it on my computer. They just put my new application on my computer a few minutes before class. That's why I had to reboot the computer. Now, from now on, when we use calculator, it will be my smart view and it'll look like, eventually, it will look like, okay. Shouldn't take that long. Oh well, so much for that. And it's supposed to come up and be a calculator and oh well, I guess it's still not working right. Okay, well anyway, I'll go show let's let's go see. Six point one, I want to see how far they go. Six point one combining like terms. Okay, we'll go over that. And there is the distributive law. So they do go over the distributive law. Let me look at 6.2 right quick and see what they do in 6.2. It should be maybe a continuation. No, it's not. Okay. So you are well. We ain't, I'm not through showing you problems yet, but you are well finished with 6.1. The only thing I have to cover now is decimals and fractions, and I doubt you're going to see decimals and fractions in the t there. It is. See, there's I've been waiting for that. Nine times nine is equal to, and it kind of it's easier for y'all to see the numbers and stuff. You're welcome. All right, now let me check the roll right quick. Most of y'all are here, uh, but I want to check for those that were absent. 
and then y'all can skedaddle if Tri-County hadn't logged me off. So you are responsible for 6.1 homework now, and it should come up when you pull it up. Let's check and see right quick. Wait, I forgot, um, what, which one, 6.1 homework, how many do we do? Like, do we do the whole thing? I don't know who asked that question, but I'm not gonna answer it. Okay. I've just finished 6.1 homework. Yes. I just finished 6.1, so that means that y'all are responsible for 6.1. Now, I have not covered decimals and fractions, but I don't think you're going to have any decimals or fractions in your homework. So there it is right there. I'll look at the last one and see. I don't think there'll be too many, but I'm going to show you decimals and fractions. Yeah, there's they're all whole numbers, but we're going to do decimals and fractions Wednesday, and that's going to be extra for you extra notes. So you'll know what to do in case you're given a fraction, but you should be able to do the uh, the 6.1 homework now. OK. All right, so let me get rid of that. I don't forgot what I was going to do. Oh, the home, the uh, attendance. Attendance faculty. And I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to turn off the recording. And